This is Rotorua, a bustling tourist city renowned for its geothermal activity and Maori culture. Situated in the heart of the North Island, the unique thermal activity has created beautiful geysers, bubbling mud pools, and hot thermal springs, which attract both domestic and international travellers. On a cold winter morning in June, we set off on a 200 kilometer journey for Rotorua from Masjid Baitul Mukit in Auckland. Our goal was to experience and learn more about this beautiful city. Not because of its beautiful landscapes and natural wonders, not because of the unique Maori cultural experiences. Rather, we wished to experience and relive part of the historic tour of the worldwide head of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, His Holiness Hazrat Mirza Masroor Ahmed. Alongside the countless other engagements, His Holiness was also taken to the city of Rotorua for a brief tour of this geothermal city. Today, we will be reminiscing the visit of His Holiness to this beautiful city and giving you an insight into some of its other attractions. In 2013, His Holiness visited this site, Tepuya. In Abid Khan Sahib's diary of the visit, we find that Muhammad Iqbal Sahib, the president of Jamaat New Zealand at the time, narrated his feelings of the shortage of time left for this visit. He said, At the Ridges Hotel in Rotorua, I mentioned to Huzur how we were really late for the tour to see the geysers and hot pools. We had 15 minutes left before the park would shut for the day, of which five minutes would have been spent in travel to the park and another five minutes in passing through the gates. I offered an alternative thinking the cart and guide would not be available. Huzur declined my suggestion of the alternative and decided to stick to the plan and go to the geothermal lakes. Alhamdulillah, in the end, Allah made his Khalifa's sightseeing tour run smooth. The tour guide was there, the cart was available, and the sightseeing was extended until Hazur was happy to leave the park. It so happened that at that time, the park was available to Hazur only. And so, on that day, Hazur taught me a beautiful lesson of Allah's grace and how I should never fall short of full trust in Allah for his blessings. So, we thought we'd come here with plenty of time and explore the wonders of this site, which His Holiness eagerly enjoyed. The Tangata Fenua, the indigenous people of the land, or the Maori in this region, have made these natural wonders a part of their lives. The Tepuya experience begins with a porphyry onto the Rotofio Marae. A porphyry is a traditional ceremony welcoming people onto a marae. The porphyry is a process whereby the host people welcome visitors on the marae, a gathering courtyard which is the hub of a Maori community. This reminded me of the welcome Huzul received at Turanga Waiwai. In modern times, a wero or taki ritual challenge occurs when a particularly important visitor is being welcomed. A full challenge involves three challengers who are warriors. The Rako Fakahara warning baton is laid down by the first challenger. After it is picked up by the honoured guest, the challenger turns and returns to his people. This challenger then leads the party onto the marae. After the formal welcome, we were part of the extended whanau, or family. We were now invited inside the beautifully carved farenui, or meeting house, to experience a traditional and unique cultural performance. The Maori cultural performances last approximately 40 minutes and consist of games, a haka, and also gives an opportunity for guests to experience the Maori culture for themselves. 
The haka is a type of ancient Maori war dance traditionally used on the battlefield, as well as when groups came together in peace. Today, haka are still used during Maori ceremonies and celebrations to honour guests and show the importance of the occasion. Haka are also used to challenge opponents on the sports field. You may have seen a haka performed by New Zealand's All Blacks before a rugby match. You probably agree that it's a terrifying sight to behold. Rotorua's volcanic activity has drawn visitors to the region for generations and when it comes to things to do in Rotorua, no visit is complete without exploring its spectacular thermal parks and attractions. The Pohutu is the largest active Giza in the southern hemisphere. The Giza erupts once or twice every hour and sometimes reaches heights of 30 meters or 100 feet. Mud pools are an icon of New Zealand scenery. A mud pot or mud pool is a sort of acidic hot spring or fumarole with limited water. Mud from thermally heated mud pools was used by Maori to treat a variety of ailments. Maori traditionally used thermal mud to treat cuts and burns. The fine acidic mud contains many different minerals and it was found to help the skin heal and rejuvenate. Thermal mud was used to treat arthritis and rheumatism and to cleanse skin. Tipuya's Kiwi House contains a nocturnal enclosure where one is able to come face to face with New Zealand's famous flightless bird and national icon, the Kiwi. At Tipuya, you can see Kiwi close up and learn how these extraordinary endangered birds are protected. There are five species of kiwi. The kiwi at Tepuya are brown kiwi. The kiwi has large strong legs, sharp claws and a long beak. Its feathers are shaggy. The kiwi's egg is huge and females lay only one at a time. Years ago, there were about 12 million kiwi, but today there are fewer than 100,000 and this national icon is endangered. Maori have always regarded the kiwi as a special bird. They believed it to be the hidden bird of Tane Mahuta, the god of the forest. Kiwi feathers were woven into beautiful cloaks which were worn only by chiefs. The name Kiwi is believed to have been inspired by the Kiwi, a tropical bird with a long beak found in Polynesia that resembles the Kiwi. The Kiwi bird is an important cultural icon to all New Zealanders who call themselves Kiwis. In the late 1800s, the Kiwi started being used as a trademark and featured on one of the first pictorial stamps issued. During the early 1900s, New Zealand was depicted in sporting and other cartoons as a Kiwi. During the First World War, New Zealand soldiers started being referred to as Kiwis. The term has remained popular until today. As we came to the last stop at Te Puya, we were able to see some Maori arts and crafts in progress too. Now, off to Lake Rotorua. This was a lake I really wanted to visit. To me, there was nothing special about the legends and stories about this lake in Maori culture. The only thing of value to me was that His Holiness spent an hour or so here. Abid Khan Sahib described it as one of the most intimate and enjoyable parts of the entire tour. This was a must for us. Huzur spent nearly an hour at the lake and it seemed 
that he was able to relax and take in Allah's natural beauty. Huzur went and sat on a bench on his own facing the lake. It seemed that Huzur wished to quietly sit and reflect without the normal crowd of people around him. Abid Khan Saib captured this moment in his diary with a beautiful and memorable photo. Our mission was to locate that same bench and enjoy the moment. As we woke the next morning, we were reminded of our presence in this city. There is a strong, pungent smell in the city which comes from the emissions of hydrogen sulphide. Therefore, one of the nicknames of Rotorua is Sulphur City. However, we got used to the smell very quickly and set off for some other sites. Our first stop today was Waiotapu. Waiotapu Māori for sacred waters, is an active geothermal area and is New Zealand's most colourful geothermal attraction. It is an area in which the landscape has been sculptured by geothermal activity and where unique volcanic features can be viewed from well-defined tracks. Due to dramatic geothermal conditions beneath the earth, the area has many hot springs noted for their colourful appearance including the Lady Knox Geezer, Champagne Pool, Artist's Palette and Boiling Mud Pools. These can mostly be viewed through access by foot. And in addition to a paid and curated experience, naturally forming hot springs appear around the area anyways. The Lady Knox Geezer is a geezer named after Lady Constance Knox, the second daughter of Upta Knox. 15th governor of New Zealand. The geyser is induced to erupt daily by dropping a surfactant detergent into the opening of the vent. Eruptions produce a jet of water reaching up to 20 meters and can last for over an hour depending on the weather. The Champagne Pool is the largest hot spring in New Zealand, measuring 65 metres in diameter and 62 metres deep, with a surface temperature of 74 degrees Celsius. The bubbles you see rising out of the pool are from carbon dioxide and provide the champagne-like effect in the water. The orange rim around the edge of the pool contains the minerals arsenic and antimony sulphur. As we walked around, we were left amazed and in wonder at the beauty of Allah's creation. The incredible colours of nature and the beautifully crafted natural wonders. The underground systems which lead to the geysers and their eruptions all show the intricacies and balance of creation. As our time came to an end, before making our way back to Auckland, we made one last stop. This is Skyline Rotorua. Skyline Rotorua is an all-weather attraction, open every day of the year and a must-visit attraction in Rotorua. The Skyline Rotorua Gondola is the most spectacular way to take in the 180-degree views of the city. Visitors can jump on board one of the eight-seater gondola cabins and experience spectacular views of Lake Rotorua, the city, and steaming geothermal vistas. Once up top, visitors can choose to luge, mountain bike, sky swing, or check out the natural trails. The luge is a world first. With three different track options and over five kilometers of track to ride. Once is certainly never enough. Riders have full control over the three wheel gravity based luge cart. Nestle into a luge cart and zip off with friends or family to discover who has the skills to master the luge. 
This was a very enjoyable experience and a must do for anyone visiting Rotorua. Finally, as we enjoyed our time in Rotorua and appreciated the beauty of Allah, we were also reminded of the blessed time His Holiness spent in this city. As we made our way back towards the mosque, we wished that His Holiness will once again bless the shores of New Zealand soon. Inshallah.